Hi, I'm Daytona Dave from Boot Hill Amps. I've sold many kits to customers around the world. 5F1, 5E3, 5F6A amplifier kits. And I get a lot of questions by telephone calls and emails uh, which, where people would like to know how to do the filament circuit wiring in these kits and how exactly to lay that out and how to do it in the most professional manner possible. So I've got one here today that I've done to show you exactly how I do it and hopefully you can implement the same methods and do it successfully the first time. We begin with valve 1. V1 is a 9 pin tube socket to fit a 12AX7 or a 12AY7 and it won't work unless it's got a heater filament connection. You've got nine pins, one, two, three, four and five should be tied together on one wire soldered across for your heater filament. And pin number nine gets a wire as well. These are twisted pairs of wires. This is a pair of wires that's twisted together. As we move to V2, another 12AX7 nine pin socket, we also have number four and number five tied together with one solder joint and an additional wire coming off to meet the next tube down the line. Pin nine on the back has two wires connected to it, soldered to it, and it goes down the line to the next tube. We call this the daisy chain. Now let's move down to the first power tube, V3. This is your 6V6 octal or 8 pin tube socket. You have a wire on pin 2 and another wire on pin 7. We move to the next one down, V4, same thing, a wire on pin 2 and a wire on pin 7 with, with another set of wires going up to the pilot light. Here is the pilot light and another set of wires coming through this hole from the power transformer to put the energy into the system. The 6.3 volts of alternating current to power the system and this is what heats all the tubes in the system. You've got four tubes and they all are connected through this wiring system. Now over here will go the rectifier tube but it has its own separate heating system so we needn't concern ourselves with that in this video. We're only going to talk about the heater filament circuit and one other thing this set of resistors these are 110 ohm resistors and one is on pin 2 and the other is on pin 7. They come up and then down to pin 8. This provides what we call an artificial center tap. If your power transformer has no center tap for the heater filament circuit then you must provide an artificial center tap to prevent the heater from making a humming sound. And this is how it's done just as I have here. Now connecting it to pin 8 in a cathode biased amplifier will cause the filament circuit to ride on top of the DC current involved in the cathode resistor which is, we'll see later on. Mostly I want you to see the heater wiring circuit and how it's the twisted pairs are laid against the edge of the chassis and I'm going to show you now how to make the twisted pairs. Here's a cordless drill. It's not an expensive one. Any type of cordless drill will do. And in the chuck I have two wires secured and I've set them rather deep inside the chuck 
so that I don't spiral the inside of the edges that I want to be free. And here I'm going to grip it with some needle nose pliers and then I'm going to, to turn on the drill so I can twist the wires. A little bit of buckling there will ensure that this type of wire will stay nice and snug, as snug as it needs to be to incorporate into our heater wiring circuit. Simply undo it and we've got a length of twisted pair that we can work in between as you've seen in the uh, chassis. I've laid out the dimensions for each set of wires to simplify the process for you. This set of wires you need a pair that are five and a half inches long. Once you twist the wires with your battery drill you'll have the appropriate length with just a little bit extra so that you can do a nice neat job and have enough room to tuck the wire into the lip of the chassis. So you've got five and a half inches between this one and this one. That's two wires five and a half inches long. You've got eight inches between this run and this run and you've got four and a half inches from this run to this run and another four and a half inch run from here to the pilot light. Then when your power transformer is mounted you'll have a pair of green wires and you will also connect them here to pin 2 and pin 7 leaving just enough slack so that you've not, you're not overly tensioned but not so much wire that you've got a loop and it's that simple. Here we have a board that's ready to be mounted inside the chassis. This board is connected, all the wires are, are connected and soldered and ready to go and you see I've got it, I've got the controls mounted on a wooden template. You could use a cardboard template but doing it on a template outside the chassis makes it easier than working and trying to solder inside the chassis. So you've got everything on the template. You simply remove the template by undoing the nuts and then install the whole system as one unit inside the chassis. Now you can't do that with your tube sockets because your tube sockets have to be mounted in place already. But you can do this to save uh, a lot of trouble and aggravation from trying to solder inside the chassis. This way you can be assured of better solder joints. Now once we get the board installed, then the wires will be connected to their appropriate tube sockets. V1 will have five connections and V2 will have six and the power tube will have a few over here like so. Just wanted to show you another example of the template system that I use that I recommend for anyone to try and do a better job to do a good job on your amplifier project. Everyone wants to do the best they can. Well I hope you enjoyed this video presentation that will help clear up some issues you may have had with filament circuits. Please uh, give us a call anytime. Look us up on the web www.boothillamps.com or send me an email haircuttingcowboy at yahoo.com Thanks again and give us a call soon. I'd love to sell you one of my kits. The 5F1, 5E3 or 5F6A kits are always in stock at Boot Hill Amps. Thanks again.